here. My wife did two years, many years ago, at Valdosta State, so we, we consider this uh, familiar territory. Um, Andrea asked me to come down, and I had talked with Roy a bit, um, to discuss with you strategic planning for economic development as a potential follow-up to the study that Janice did, sponsored by Georgia Power. Uh, I'm a huge fan of strategic planning. Just as a company or a university or any institution needs a strategic plan to operate effectively, imagine running a business without a strategic plan. In my experience, um, the, successful, the most successful communities when it comes to economic development have a strategic plan. They don't always follow it to the letter, but you know the old saying, a strategic plan is, some, is a place to deviate from and create, and, uh, uh, create a plan and modify that plan as you go forward. So if you don't start with a strategic plan, it's hard to figure out where you want to go. I'll start with a real quick story. Um, years ago when I was director of the Community Development Institute at the University of Central Arkansas, the mayor of Mayflower, Arkansas, population 1600 on a good day, came to me. He was one of my students and he said, help me out, Mr. Pittman. Uh, half of my community is telling me that um, we need to build a youth sports complex. The other half is telling me we need to build a speculative, a speculative building to attract industry. And I said, well, um, you tell me what you want your community to do and I'll tell you what to do. Do you want your community to continue to be a bedroom community for Little Rock or do you want your people that live in Mayflower to be able to have a job without having to drive to Little Rock? You tell me the answer to that question and I will tell you what to do. That simple story illustrates, in my mind, what strategic planning does. Uh, communities um, uh, have debates all the time about how, how to allocate resources. Economic development agencies all the time have debates about how to allocate resources. And so, like the simple example of Mayflower, Arkansas, having a vision, having a plan really helps. And in this case, um, Andrea asked me to talk about a plan more for the industrial authority and ensuring that the industrial authority uh, prioritizes its actions in a way that, that is consistent with the community goals, visions, make sure everybody's aligned. So I'll just take a few minutes to run through a few slides here. Andrea's told us about my company, uh, my partner Jennifer Tanner, uh, is currently, we're in our fourth year uh, with a contract with the state of Louisiana. We're doing strategic planning initiatives uh, for about 30 communities throughout Louisiana. So it's one of our specialties. We do quite a bit of it. Um, as I mentioned, there's a, I think, a tremendous need for economic development strategic planning. It helps with uh, public, private, public and private involvement in economic development. There's a need for transparency and communication when you do economic development. Witness the open nature of all these meetings and a strategic plan helps with that, gets everybody on board. Um, it helps prioritize your economic development actions as the simple story of Mayflower illustrates. I mentioned that. And uh, it helps develop the connections between stakeholder groups and organizations. The important precursor to economic development, in my opinion, is community development. Uh, having people together, realizing where you want the community to go, having the, the ties between the public and the private sector, strengthening those, that's a hallmark of successful community and economic development. And a strategic plan helps immensely with that. Um, just real quick, two levels of strategic planning, and uh, it would be up to you to decide what level you want to do. As I mentioned, I'm a huge advocate of community development, because in site selection, uh, as you know, Alan, Andrea, and those of you that do this on a regular basis, companies make site decisions based on a good industrial park, just like you showed us. But at the end of the day, when it comes down, when my clients uh, come down to two or three communities that they're choosing from, yes, you have water, yes, you have sewer, yes, you have industrial park, yes, you have good street names in your industrial park, but you know what? Uh, chances are they're going to decide based on quality of life, based on education system, based on retail, because once you're down to those final three or four communities, everything works. And so the decision can be quite subjective. That's why the community development aspect of it is very important. And in the more broad level of strategic planning, 
what we do is we, we drill down very deeply, we look at the broader aspects of the community, education, recreation, all of those kinds of things, uh, and come up with a, help the community come up with a strategic plan, not only for economic development, but to help with the community development part of it. The other aspect of, of strategic planning is more the economic development part of it, more specific to community economic, uh, economic development vision and goals more guiding the work program and the resource allocation of the economic development organization. An economic development organization needs to have some direction, some vision, some goals from the community. Uh, I mean, you all are on the board and yes, you make decisions every day, but you also go home and talk to your spouses, you also talk to the people that you work with, you talk to the people when you're sitting down to eat dinner in a restaurant, and I'll bet you they have ideas about what Valdosta Lowndes County should do with economic development. So it's a formal process of, of vetting that, of letting people have input, of coming to, to conclusions, stakeholder meetings, uh, interviews. Uh, if we're fortunate enough to work with you on this project, we'd probably interview 40 to 50 people throughout the community, key stakeholder organizations, and then bring that vision and those ideas together and help you prioritize so you can make decisions about the best things to do. It guides your work program, it makes for more alignment and efficiency of your economic development effort, and like any business these days, we certainly need that in today's economy. I've talked a little bit about the methodology, I won't go through that in, in detail. I told Andrea I'd be happy to um, send you a more detailed proposal or more detailed ideas for uh, how to approach this. Um, we, uh, I mentioned the, the alignment meetings with you, the, the project leadership, the board. Uh, it's very important when you do a strategic plan to get the word out exactly what you're going to do. And we do that in the communities we work in, notify the stakeholders and the participants about what's happening, con uh, confidential interviews and discussion groups, um, about the economic development vision, goals, the community's ideas for priorities in economic development, bring that all together, summarize that, uh, help you understand that. And it's important, you know, a consultant is a briefcase toting expert from out of town. It's important to be that because um, the people we talk to in the community will very often not feel comfortable talking to people who are already here. And having that outside perspective, along, uh, along with experience in economic development and site selection is, is very helpful. After we do the, um, we or whoever you select does the, the uh, gathering of information, talking with constituents, and it's time to put a plan together based on the input from the community, identify the priorities and goals, do a draft, emphasize some low-hanging fruit, um, it's important to have short-term goals and long-term goals. A lot of communities get in trouble, if you will, because they set impossible goals. And it's very difficult for the Economic Development Agency or anybody to do that. You need the short-term success. You need the low-hanging fruit. Uh, keep the momentum going. Set your goals. Make them measurable. Uh, and be accountable. Have you met the plan? Uh, if not, why not? <coughs> Uh, and like I said earlier, a strategic plan is usually something to deviate from. So it's really a process of understanding priorities and goals, uh, broadly based, letting people have input, have say, and prioritizing. Uh, and choosing between the youth sports complex or the spec building, just like uh, Mayflower Arkansas had to do. Uh, it's probably about a six month process from start to finish. Uh, depending on how fast you want us to, you would want us, or whoever you choose to go, uh, and how much input and review that you want. So that's a real quick overview of um, something we've done probably a hundred times, and I have to say it varies with each community. Um, but I would want to emphasize that um, it is a hallmark of of the most successful communities when it comes to economic development, just as it is for businesses or any private organization that you all might work for. Robert, tell me, yes, how, how is it that uh, you would ensure that you got broad-based input? And how is it that you would communicate 
to everyone in the general sense in this community that we have this plan going on. They have this what? Study. Study going on? Yes. Um, there's several ways that we would do that. Um, usually we create a website. Uh, we would work with your new uh, staff member to get the word out, newspaper articles. Um, be down here and um, meet with whomever you wanted us to. Um, in the normal way that you would get an announcement out, we would, we would do that. And, th and that's my real challenge. The uh -huh. normal way is seen by many folks as insufficient. Mm -hmm. For example, we have newspaper advertisements. Right. You know, we have a web page. Right. And people still complain. We don't know what's going on with the authority. Sure. It operates almost like a secret society. Sure, sure. Yeah. How is it that we overcome that? Well, and how can you help us over? You know, I wish I had a magic bullet, Roy, but I, I, I will tell you that in some communities, uh, we have people out in front of Walmart on Saturday mornings. And the challenge sometimes is to reach people that might not read the normal uh, media outlets or whatever. Um, uh, we do a lot of emailing these days. Uh, people are really web savvy, very web savvy. Uh, and um, schools, schools a lot of times. Uh, through PTAs, get the word out like that. Uh, so there's electronic, there's physical, uh, there's print, and you you just try to cover all of those to make sure that you reach all uh, all the stakeholders that you want to. Sometimes Walmart works. <laughs> Who we want to reach may not be the same people that we really need to reach. That, that's two different questions, two different groups. Right. And if we're broadening the tent, I want to make sure that we reach people who may have felt they're not part of this this process. <clears throat> right. The, the, the broader based one as opposed to the narrow list of stakeholders. Uh, we've used telephone surveys. Uh, if you do a, uh, a random uh, you can do a telephone survey for 100, 200 people. It's statistically valid. Uh, you can do it that way. Uh, you know, standing on the corner, going to schools, um, whatever those constituents that you think you're missing, uh, we could help you identify and figure out how to get to them. And we can do all of this within the estimated costs. Well, <laughs> as I said to you earlier, we would we would send you a specific proposal that would itemize what we would what we would do. Uh, I'm sorry. Do y'all have questions? Um, feel free to ask while he's here. And um, Dr. Pittman's actually going to stay a little bit after our meeting, and he should do you have you know questions. How, how useful is the information that you gathered with the Georgia Power <coughs> Survey that you did? The Georgia Power Studies were community assessments. We did 15 communities throughout Georgia. Eight of those have decided to move forward with the strategic planning like we're discussing here. Um, places like Polk County, places like Athens, Georgia that we did work in. Uh, the other communities for various reasons decided at this point not to move forward, or the timing wasn't right, the moon, the sun, and the stars were aligned, whatever. But I'm very proud of what we did with Georgia Power, and I'm very complimentary of Georgia Power for selecting those communities that, in their opinion, have a lot of potential um, and could benefit from this kind of analysis. Your work with Georgia Power in this community was excellent. Thank you. So, I'm sorry, so if we look at these two, would we say that there, we've pretty much done what we would need to do with community development, or can we take what we've done and use that as a base, or would we have to go back and do more? Community development is a never-ending process, just like economic development is. My point here is for you all to decide how much you want to do in this current situation, how much budgets allow, what you want to do right now. In the community development aspect of it, it's more broad-based, it's more um, citizen committee driven. Identify, create committees, individuals in the community that are really going to work on how we can tweak our educational system to help us attract um, the kind of industry that we really want. Um, 
recreation opportunities, how we can make the community more attractive for knowledge workers. Something like that. That's very detailed, usually about a 12-month process. And correct me if I'm wrong, wouldn't that be something more that the city county would also use to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, it would help with those priorities. Uh, I talked earlier with the uh, city and county managers. We talked a lot about how do you set budget priorities. Well, everybody has different desires for how they want the city and county to spend their money, but if there's no sort of common vision for economic development, it's hard to, uh, to have a decision framework to make an efficient decision. And that's what this process can help do when it comes to economic development and the community development side as well. So if you want to jump on the horse and really do the whole ball of wax, then you can do that. Uh, this is more of a effort that's specific to the um, industrial authority and would help you guide your and prioritize your activities in a way that you can say is consistent with the community vision, goals, and objectives. Um, without the the detailed more follow up long term work. That can come later. I guess that's what I'm asking. Do we have enough out of what we've done to get a flavor for that and be ready to go yes. ahead? The answer is yes. And what you would you could do later is you could go back and say, okay, we've got our priorities, we've got our plan. Part of our plan is to continuously improve those aspects of the community that will help us achieve the vision and the plan. Those things go beyond the scope of the industrial authority. Yes, they do. Now, yes, my, they do. And my question is, yes, would you do. be inclined to speak with county, city leaders to entice and encourage them to join us in this effort that's broader in scope that will surely impact economic development, the community in general, etc.? You know, the, the, the second economic development is clearly within the purview of yes, the authority. Yes, yes. How is it that you can help us convince these leaders that this is something that they ought to do? Well, and I guess I'll be happy to talk about more Mayflower Arkansas. I'll be, ta I'll be happy to explain the importance of tying the two together. Uh, you can do it now. You can do it later. Um, but it's, this would be the more comprehensive approach. It depend, This would be a good product, a standalone product. This would be the more comprehensive product that you could do when the time is right for you. Well, we, no question about it, we need a strategic plan from a industrial authority. It would be nice to have the, the city, county, chamber of commerce, and all these others on board with us from the community development standpoint. But, but somebody's got to take the lead, and, and it, it might be that we could start with economic development, strategic plan, and, and work with the city, county, education systems, and, and things like that to, to bring them in and broaden the scope as you move forward. Right, and like I said earlier, what can come out of this is a um, a report on the community development aspects of things, and part of what we did already with the competitive assessment deals with this. So we, we're, we've already got a leg up on this. Uh, and then we could relate what we've done already more to the economic development goals. And like I said, this is ongoing. You'll be doing, your, your grandchildren will be doing this. It's never finished. And so that's something that you can do on an ongoing basis. It's, it's not a discrete process.